What's up guys, Peter Von Panda here. Hey, I'm in the bathroom. What up? And I want to show you this shower door in case you're looking to replace the shower door. So here's my experience. Um, I've been using this and I thought I'd give you some, some tips on it and kind of my uh, reality check in terms of value. I ordered a shower door on Amazon and the reason I did that was I was actually looking at replacing kind of your standard plastic shower door here with a glass shower door. I wanted it frameless so that you didn't have to duck your head or anything to get into it like it did previously. My shower width here is only 39.75 inches across. So I couldn't use a sliding shower door. It had to be uh, a door of some sort. And I actually almost kind of considered one of those pivoting doors that had a top, uh, a framed in top bar there. But ended up finding this Uniline you know, uh, Dream shower door online. And compared to the cost that I saw or got from people that would come and custom cut a shower door, this was about a third of that price. So for this shower, I, basically my average quote for someone to build a custom shower door and install it, so it, was, it would be completely done, was about 1500 bucks. I got this one on Amazon for under $600 delivered. Now, it's not prime, so I didn't get it in the 48 hours. It actually took about a week, uh, about nine days, but actually two of those days were because I actually delayed the delivery because you actually had to be home to receive it. So I got it via, via FedEx Freight, and uh, they deliver kind of in a time window, which ends up being at the later end of the time window. But just wanted to give you a quick tour of it because for 600 bucks, uh, me and a uh, buddy put it in, and so I've got a little bit of insight into what to expect. Now, first of all, the door is true glass, and it's pretty impressive, and it's pretty heavy. Even carrying the glass doors in here, you had to really do it with two people. So you actually have two fairly big glass panels. This side, oh, focus there. This door, which is obviously the door and the bigger piece, and then kind of this uh, static panel on this side. You can also mount and install it any way you want. So I could have put the door over here and that spacer over there, uh, but I was kind of convinced to do it this way so it wouldn't interfere with my bathroom door. Although one of my considerations here is when I open a shower door and go into the shower and grab the handle, I kind of like being able to be right up against the wall so that I don't get soaked with cold water. And so I kind of wanted the door here and I, I personally like that, but you know, I ended up doing it this way, like I said, so it doesn't, so you're not trapped in there if the bathroom door is open. Um, so big, big, meaty glass on it. Uh, I was really impressed with that. There's a little bit of a beveled edge right there, so you don't have a sharp, um, you know, edge on the door. This edge is relatively sharp, and as you can see, it's kind of, uh, you know, green. It does give just a little bit of tint, right? So the glass is just slightly tinted, but it, it's, it's obviously very clear. And then this piece of glass is effectively the same thing. So it's, you know, it's, it's just the same glass. Um, now, let me just talk about this side first, which is gonna be an easier. You're gonna to wanna to kind of put this door in first, I think, and then put this one in. But uh, you could do it either way, I suppose. This is the brushed or satin nickel. So you get this strip here, which is kind of a, a frame that screws into the wall, right? And you have to put this bad boy in. You have to put one down here on the ground as well, or on the bottom of the tub. And you have to drill some holes. So you're gonna need a pretty decent drill and pretty decent drill bits and do it pretty carefully so you don't break or shatter your tile. And then it does come with screws and little plastic anchors. And so you're gonna have to put those in and you screw them in and I kinda, um, you know, like tack welding, kind of screwed them in, you know, slowly and then until they all were in there so that I didn't have one pulling on the tile. I was really kind of paranoid about popping tile. This side obviously doesn't move and it is mounted in a couple different places. So I it's, it's kind of more secure and more stable, I think. Now, once you put it in, you can caulk it. And what I end up doing, and I need to kind of trim off the extra caulk with a razor blade, but I kind of put caulk into the, the uh, bracket and then kind of, we kind of slid the glass in. And the reason I say that you might, well, I might actually 
change my mind. One of the reasons that you might actually want to do this side first is just to get the two doors even, right? So I have a little bit of unevenness here. It's not a big deal. It doesn't kill my OCD, but um, you know, you're kind of forced into putting this in wherever you can. I mean, this the bottom bracket is going to suspend the glass just a little bit above that bottom tile. And so you're going to kind of jam it in there and jam it into the back. And obviously I grounded that as well. And then you're going to um, adjust in here. So here's the other trick. And again, the reason I put this door in there first and, I, and ultimately the reason I think you put this door in here first is that my shower width is 39 and three quarters. This whole kit is meant to do 39 and a half to 40. So it's a weird, weird size. And the way they do that adjustment is you can push in the glass basically to 39 and a half, uh, or if it's, you know, which is gonna be all the way to the wall, or if you pull it out a half an inch, uh, you're gonna have a little space in there, but then you're gonna kind of fill in a whole 40 inch wide shower well. So that, does that make sense? So basically this glass, you slide it in or out kind of um, to kind of take up that gap. Now you only have a half an inch of adjustability. So understand if you're over 40 inches, don't use this door. If you're under 39 and a half inches, don't use this door or look for the one that's in the right measurement, you know, spec. So you got to definitely clearly measure. I think this is pretty nice. You know, the metal isn't super thick, but it's, it's much stiffer and stronger than I thought. It does have kind of a nice brushed uh, nickel finish, which does match kind of the other hardware, which is also advertised as ni satin nickel. So I like that. I like that it's not chrome and, you know, I think hide scratches and water spots a little bit better, but you will have to do a little cleanup after that. And then you'll probably also want to uh, caulk in, in behind the, uh, the frame as well. I did it obviously on the inside of the shower. Now let's go over here to the door. This is the bigger piece and this kind of takes a, a, a longer time and you're gonna need a couple of dudes. So you have to install these hinges, which are pretty nice. Um, they have two pieces that kind of clamp and there's a cutout in the glass here and some holes. So you kind of clamp the two metal pieces. There's also, you can see here, like a little clear plastic gasket that goes in between to give it some traction. It's kind of sneaking out the bottom there. It's kind of a, the nature of not knowing what you're doing the first time, but, and then that's what holds the door in place. I was really worried about this door and all that weight only being held in by two little hinges, but seems to work great. And what you do here again is you have to drill four holes into your ceramic tile. There's also another little like clear rubber gasket, you know, to help grip and distribute pressure a little bit because you're going to uh, drill in the holes, you're going to put in those little plastic spacers, and then you're going to drill in these um, the screws to hold it in place. This base part with this tab, this tongue sticking out here, is all you're going to install first. And so here's where you're going to want to measure twice and cut once, is because you're going to want to make sure that you're putting these where it's going to meet up with the door. And that takes, man, that was kind of nerve-wracking. So you're going to have to measure from the bottom up. You're going to want to mark your holes, drill them, make sure you get them centered exactly where you want, kind of, um, you know, tighten them up, you know, in a cross, uh, cross pattern here to make sure it's nice and even. And then you're going to be able to attach these and then lift your door into place and attach it. Uh, it I, I feel like the key here is to get it to the right height so that the glass is not touching your bottom tile here because you're going to affix these little rubber kind of squeegee edges. And so you want the door hovering above your base here by probably a quarter of an inch or so, maybe even a little more depending on how your shower bottom, you know, is shaped because so, you don't want water running out. You don't want necessarily plastic, this like silicone or rubber plastic scraping on something really hard, but uh, that's going to be what takes up the bottom gap. You also get a bunch of these like gap <laughs> fillers. And what we did here is uh, cut it 
um, and then kind of mount it to the wall here to kind of fill in this other gap. So kind of did a little bit of cutting so that we could cover or, you know, cruise above the bracket. Now the door does swing in or out. It'll swing a full 180 degrees this way to this way. The way you control it and the way you decide which way you want the door is really this strip right here, which you put on the the glass that's static, right? So you can just flip this upside down and put the, the flange on this side or this side, and then the door is obviously going to have a stop, right? So as I close the door here, it's not going to go any further than that. And this glass is what stops that and holds it into place. So obviously you're going to use this handle, which is kind of cleverly designed, on the pull side. You're going to put the big handle on the pull side. Now, you do get this little knob with a notch here. So if you're pulling it closed from the inside, you can do that. Or if you wanted your shower door to be open from the inside, I kind of would suggest having a large shower door if you're going to have it open on the inside. You could have the handle here like that. Now, if you didn't put the strip in here, the door could swing a full 180 degrees. So it's kind of your choice. If you don't want this quarter inch gap in there, you may have water coming out of there. Um, I have a shower door that's very similar to this, but I don't have this strip on there. And just kind of the way it's set up, uh, you know, it doesn't splash out of there uh, because the shower head is further back. The shower itself is larger. So it's kind of your choice whether to obviously put it in. But this is, but I set this up so the shower door opens from the outside. Now, that's going to decide which side of the door you're going to put this strip. So if I show you here, if I open this door, it's kind of levering away from that strip because of the way I've got the door opening outward. Obviously, if you were going to open it inward, you would put this on the other side of the glass. Um, but with the way it is right now, I open this door and it doesn't interfere, right? And it just kind of creates a full, nice watertight seal. Now, I'm assuming these things are pretty durable, but they're easily replaceable. There's nothing gluing them on. They just kind of compression fit on there and, and kind of pinch the glass. But overall, I think the hardware looks great. You know, this brushed nickel feels good. It feels a little matte finished and it doesn't show fingerprints as much and it doesn't show water spots as much. And I just think it doesn't shine and, you know, reflect like chrome. And I think in a lot of ways, that's kind of what I wanted. You know, I just wanted to kind of matte things down a little bit, you know, and, but have still obviously the look of metal, which is going to be quite a bit more, you know, perceived value and luxury than the plastic that I had in before. And if you're going to finish everything off with satin or brushed and nickel finishes, then it kind of all just mentally ties together. So just wanted to show you the store. Like I said, uh, 570-ish dollars uh, delivered to my house, but it does take, I don't know, you, you'd be quicker, but it, it took all day for me and a buddy to put this in. And uh, we were taking our time, never having done one before, but I think it's a pretty nice. Obviously a little bit of cleanup work to do still, but pretty impressed with it. So for a third of the cost of a professional custom cut door, I think this looks really, really great. Better than I expected. Peter Von Panda, out.